Right, it's gonna be part two of the Q7 in today's work, today's workshop, today's video, and we will be getting it into the workshop. Uh, but first we need to replace the BMW M2. And for those of you who haven't seen this video, go watch the video now. Um, the little slight update, I've just put oil in it because obviously I need to run it to get it out of the workshop. And yeah, it runs absolutely fine. Um, so yeah, we're gonna take this out and get the Q7 in and start looking at the faults with the airbags depleting. Oh, well, since I filmed the first video and it's dropped a little bit more, mainly on the near side rear and the near side front, the, fr uh, the offside front and the offside rear aren't too bad. But uh, yeah, let's jump in and get in the workshop. Brilliant. She's flat. Unfortunately, with cars that I have, they end up sitting for sometimes weeks on end, and this is what happens quite often. So that is where today's sponsor is actually going to help me out massively. We're a topped on TB600 Pro, which is an all-in-one battery charger and tester. And uh, yeah, I'm going to get it to charge the battery whilst I actually talk to you about it. So just plug it on, and we can actually use the app on my phone to start charging it. 12 volt normal. And there we go, look, battery level, 25%, 25%, and it is now charging. The Top Don TB600 Pro is a two-in-one battery charger and tester. Now you can connect to it using your mobile phone app, using your Apple or Android device. And that is where you can fully control the tester and use its main features such as a pre and post charging report showing accurate data comparison, including CCA, internal resistance, voltage, state of health, and the report clearly shows how much the battery has been improved after being charged. Newbie in expert mode, easy operation for entry level and DIY smart charging routes for experts. Timed automatic charging, and it is compatible with all types of 6 volt and 12 volt lead acid batteries and 12 volt lithium batteries. And it supports multiple battery types. You also have an expert mode as well where you can change loads of different settings throughout the battery charging process, including the maximum voltage, the maximum current, and you can also change these settings during the battery charging process as well, so you can fully adapt the charge. And you can also select a schedule for your battery charging as well by selecting the time it starts and the duration of the charge. Now Top Don are doing a crowdfunding campaign for this product which is live until the 23rd of September. Now if you click the link in my description, it takes you over to their website and you get a super early price of 40% off at only $59. So as again, massive thanks to Top Don for sponsoring today's video. Right, now that is charged somewhat, it should start fine. <laughs> I mean, the battery was an issue, but it <laughs> took a while to start, didn't it? So let's just take a minute to look how clean this boot is. For a, uh, what, a 15 year old car, it is literally like it's a brand new boot. There's been no dogs in here, that's for sure. So anyway, this is what I think we may be replacing in today's video. Uh, we have our pump for the air suspension, we have our relay, and we have our solenoid valve block as well. Uh, all common problems. Um, in the last video, when I started it, the pump made an obvious loud noise whilst working. Don't get me wrong, it worked absolutely fine, but it made a loud noise, and a lot of you guys pointed out that that's probably because the pump is on its way out. However, it's now not making that noise, and it's completely silent, and it is working as it was before, as it should, but just without the noise. So now I'm not 100% sure whether I, I do even need to worry about fitting this for the moment. Um, because I really don't want to fit something if there's nothing wrong with it. That's my only concern. So I may just turn my attention to having a look at the airbags um, and trying to find the leaks in the system. So I think we're going to start with that. Uh, we'll put the car on the ramp, put it in the air, probably might need to take the wheels off 
and have a look at the valves on top of the airbags because I think that is the most common problem. So we'll start with those. Right, we're gonna start with the near side rear airbag here and I literally won't be able to get a camera, camera in there to show you. So I'm gonna just try and take a picture and put it up on the screen of where the uh, valve is if I can even do that. If I can zoom in. And now I'll get my spray bottle and uh, I'm just going to spray some ferro liquid soap on it just to see if I can see it bubbling or anything. I've lost it again. Right, I've just moved on to my phone because my camera can't actually fit up here. But I found uh, found a problem, look. Excuse the shaky hand. Um, it's actually not coming out the valve. It's coming out the top of the airbag. Perfect, look, there you go. You can see all the soap bits are coming out. I, I mean, I don't know if that is the valve. I've done no research, but that is where obviously the leak is. And yeah, that looks pretty much exactly like uh, my issue there. Um, not coming out the valve itself, but at the top of it. So I need to... Now, chances are that might be the problem with all of them. So I just need to do a little bit of research now to see if that's part of the new valve or if that's part of the airbag. Right, I've done a little research and I found a suspension unit on eBay for sale, uh, which has got a bit of a clearer picture of what the top looks like. I'll just put it up on screen now. Now, if you can see the previous clip of where my bubbles are coming from, it's actually right on the top. Now it looks like possibly where that O-ring is that you see, could be coming from there, or the unit itself may be cracked, I don't know. Um, and that is where my problem is at the minute, I just can't see in there. So I think what we're gonna have to do is remove the rear suspension strut, uh, just so we can get it out and have a better idea of where that leak's coming from. Now I have also put soap on the other side and it's leaking from the exact same place. Um, I have put soap on the fronts as well, but so far there is no indication that they are leaking. But then I just thought, because obviously it's adaptive suspension, the fronts could be compensating for the rear. So if the near side rear is sinking quite low, the control system on the computer may be like, well, we need to, this is dangerously uneven, we need to lower the front so it's a little bit more stable. So at the minute, I, I, I think I need two rear airbags that is my thoughts at the moment um i don't think the fronts are gone i think they're just compensating for the rear dropping uh, that's where i'm at the minute so what we're going to do now is obviously take the wheel off take the suspension unit off on the near side rear which is the worst one and then hopefully we'll be able to identify exactly where that air bubbles are coming from so to remove the strut which i'm doing now is just that one bolt at the bottom which you can see that i'm doing there's an electrical connection which easily just comes off and there's just the four bolts holding the airbag unit into the chassis which are all fairly accessible now a bit of a tip i found it easier to drop the unit down before i remove the airline connector uh, and once i managed to get the 12 mil spanner onto that it was it came out fairly fairly okay So the bubbles were coming out of this join here, so I don't know what's under that. There is a four 13 mil nuts. So I'm just gonna spin those off. Yeah, so it just, I think, you know, I think it's just an O-ring. Right, now with it all completely stripped down, we can have a proper look at where this air is leaking out from. And it's quite evident, really. It's just, it's pretty obvious. So, um, this is obviously where our valve was and the bubbles were all coming out of this rim gap here. Uh, so we can quite see that the rubber ring isn't necessarily perished, but you can see where it's rough on the top there and air has clearly been leaking out here. Um, and also, because it's at the back and I couldn't see the back, it was most likely, in fact, even worse, probably leaking out the back as well. Uh, and you can see on the sides here where it's all nice and clean, and that is where there's been a tight seal. And further evidence to that is on its cap, and you can just see where it's nice and clean there, look, on the sides, and then rough on the front and back. So no doubt that is where our air is leaking from. But where it gets interesting again is I phoned Audi to get a price because obviously that's where you do, you just that's your go to just to get an idea of costings. Now they don't sell any repair kits or anything for these air suspension units, and you have to buy it as a one whole damper, airbag, everything. And the price for this one corner, one airbag, two thousand eight hundred pounds. 
So if you need four airbags and a compressor, um, yeah, you're looking at what, 12 grand? No, more than that. About 14 to 15,000 pound, not including labor, just in parts to replace some airbags and a pump. I mean, if that is just not absolute rip-off theft, I just don't know what it is. Who's gonna come in with any Q7 that needs this repair and spend 15,000 pounds on suspension and then probably another thousand pounds in labor, if not more. It's just utterly, utterly theft. Um, so obviously we're never gonna do that. Uh, they, as I said, they don't sell a repair kit, so I've been now forced to look for an aftermarket solution. Now a quick Google shows me that people do sell like the valves here with an O-ring on and, and there's, a, there's also an O-ring at the top here and there's an O-ring that sits under here but that's more of a dust protector. Um, and people that sell these like on AliExpress which I'm just not going to trust um, and they don't specify the size of it so I don't know whether it's the top or bottom one. Um, but I have found a company that do sell just the airbags, so not the damper that sits inside it. We would have to strip it down um, and replace replace the airbag, which obviously comes with this unit here, which will come with a new O-ring, uh, etc. So that is an option, and they want, if you buy a pair, I think it's just under 400 quid for a pair. So we could possibly repair this with new airbags on the rear for for, for 400 quid basically um, but there is something I want to try first and the thing I want to try first which isn't going to hurt at all is to remove this o-ring clean it all up clean up the cap uh, put it back on put it fill it full of air and see if it holds or leaks it, it was a no cost option all I've got to do is just clean it up a little bit and yeah it'll probably take me half an hour 45 minutes and it may work if it doesn't then we buy the airbags So I have spent about 25 minutes cleaning everything up on this and even the O-ring look, I mean, I could lie and just say this is a new O-ring, but it's not. All the debris that was on it, I managed to pick off with absolutely no damage to the O-ring at all. It literally looks like a brand new one. So because I don't know the official size, I mean, I could measure it, but they're never all accurate. Um, so I think that was gonna be fine to refit. All this is now nicely cleaned up. I've even managed to get in the O-ring gully and clean all that up as well. So, looking around it, look, it's all nice and clean now. And also, my cap, I've completely cleaned that up as well. So there should be no more debris on the surface where air can escape. So I'm confident actually that this will work. I hope it does, because if I was I'm like an idiot. So if we just get the O-ring. Oh, I'm gonna, I need two hands. Bring this back up. Rest of my leg. Now, as long as that kind of protrudes the top, which it looks like it does, then it shouldn't be an issue. We'll give it a go. Obviously I want to test it without refitting it so I can fully see if there's any leaks coming from it. And I think I'm okay like this. I've managed to connect the airline up, managed to connect the electrical connection up. So as far as the car's concerned, it is, in <clears throat> it is installed. Um, I can't see any reason why, I mean the damper in there should stop the bag from going anywhere. It shouldn't, as in extending too far, so it should be okay. So I am just gonna start the car up now, let it fill there, hopefully nothing bad happens, and we can test for leaks. I can't hear anything, but that could be a good thing. Right, that was a bit of a faff. I ended up having to put the car like on the ground. It's got a bit confused. Um, and then I've managed to get air in it. The bag was deflated for a while, but now I've set it, I had to set it to dynamic then back to lift. But now the bag is nice and solid, so it's definitely got air in it. So now that means we should be able to check for leaks. So if I just get my spray bottle, 
I'm just going to spray it for a minute, obviously we'll come back and check it once I've... Uh... Right, we'll leave that for a couple of minutes and see the results. Now, I don't want to get carried away, but I've left it on there for probably five minutes now and not one peep of a bubble at all. Absolutely fine. And I can't really see it from here as well, but no bubbles whatsoever. So it's looking like it might be fixed. So fingers crossed it is fixed. However, um, what I'm gonna do now is put that strut fully back together. I'm gonna do the exact same to the other side and uh, yeah, I'll stick on a time lapse. We'll get all that done. And then the final result, I guess, will be to have it all fully back together and then fully test the system. Yeah, same again with this one, look, as we found, not um, too bad. Not as bad as the other one, look, but there's still a load of gunk there and you can see where the air's been escaping. A little bit around the back, but not too bad. So it's gonna clean this up and make it as good as new. And there we go, look, all cleaned up and looks pretty much as new. The cap as well, look, all in there. So that should seal lovely. Right, it's all back on the ground now. As you can see, completely slammed because there's no air in the system. So let us just start it up, let it build some air pressure. And there she is, she's fully in lift mode, which is the highest setting. So what I'm gonna do to test it now, is just leave it overnight because it's time for me to go home now anyway. So I'm gonna leave this overnight and it did drop overnight the near side rear corner. So we'll find out in the morning straight away whether it's worked or not. Um, and if it is still like it is, I'll put it back up in the air, just spray a bit more soap around it just to double check. And then fingers crossed, that will be the Q7 fixed for absolutely no money whatsoever. Uh, so yeah, see you in the morning. So, has it worked? That is the question. Yes, she's up. There we go, look, completely still at the top ride height. And the good news is the front is as well. So I'm, I'm confident at this point that the car is actually fixed. She's looking good, yeah, not dropped at all. Normally by now this would have dropped quite a lot on the near side rear and the off side rear and the near side front would have dropped as well and nothing has dropped, it is all looking all good. So I think the Q7 is now fixed, I don't think there's now any known issues with it. Um, I'm not gonna fit the compressor purely because the old one is working, but I w I'm not gonna send it back, I am gonna keep it with the car because no doubt if the compressor does go, if it does go in the next, in the not too distant future, at least there's a pump there ready to go to replace it. So I'm just gonna keep it with the car um, but yeah, I think that is a Q7 done. This isn't the end for the Q7 though. There will be another video on it because there is some body work I want to do. I have a new uh, passenger rear door to fit um, and it's going to have some body work done and the wheels refurbed and it also needs an MOT. So there will be one more video on the Q7, but for now it is fixed. There are no known faults of the car. Therefore it should pass MOT. And the best part about it is I fixed it for, apart from spending the money on the compressor, which I didn't need to at this point, I fixed it for absolutely no money. And the worst part is, if you'd have taken that to Audi, you would have walked out with a bill for a minimum of 10,000 pounds. Cheers guys.